Power to the people, we are back to the maintenance. Welcome into another edition of the Two Starving Nigerians podcast. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Whilst you're here, please do hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Um, drop us a comment as well, man. See, let, let us know how you think about this. And of course, keep in touch with us on all of our social medias. You can find us on Twitter at 2S Nigerians. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at 2 underscore stubborn Nigerians. And today, we are here to review a new album. This week's album of the week is This Is Why by Paramore. Um, new album was released February 10th, 2023. It's, it's 10 songs, 36 minutes long and 16 seconds. This was my pick. It's one of my picks. And the reason I picked this album is for a myriad of reasons. One, when I was a depressed little teenager going through um, years 7 to 11, Paramore's music was very, very timely and important to me. Um, and it was really, really helped. Really great rock band, legendary stuff, legendary status in the game. They've taken a six-year hiatus since their last album, and they were returning. And it was returning to some really high expectations. So the lead-off single, This Is Why, came out the back end of 2022. I want to say October. It was really been out for a while. Uh And it got really, like, you got the fan base, of which I do claim to be really excited. And so as someone who listens to them as a young man, um, as a young whippersnapper, (laughs) <laughs> whippersnapper is crazy <laughs> what is a whippersnapper I don't know <laughs> I have no clue <laughs> old people just be saying stuff like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean uh, but as someone who listens to them in the days of my youth I now thought let me listen to them <laughs> let me listen to them in the days of my future past <laughs> yo cut this whole cut this <laughs> Yeah, I'm on form. I'm on form, my nigga. I'm on form. Um, but no, yeah, I really wanted to listen. I really wanted to bring this album to the black table talk. Your table's black, right? Yeah, my table is black. Yeah, mine's black. Okay. So I really want to bring this album to the black table talk because mm. we're two black men as well. Come on, man. Black history. Black history oh, my two black goodies. Oh, bro. Oh, come on. It's crazy. <laughs> With black headphones. Oh, all Flip black it everything. Out, man. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and review it. Now, I'm going to make a bold assumption, correct me if I'm wrong, as you like to do. I'm going to assume that you weren't a Paramore fan in your youth. I wasn't. I wasn't. So, is this your first time ever listening to a Paramore album? It, indeed it is. Indeed do, you, it is man. do you remember that time when we were in secondary, when Paramore were a really big group, and mm-hmm. your likes of Marco, I know you're listening, don't pretend that you weren't, <laughs> was a fan of people like Paramore and listening to their music, and they were, they were you know, prominent? I do remember. I do remember. I remember... There was a time period specifically where, um, I don't know if you remember this, sweatshirts became a very big thing, specifically graphic sweatshirts, yes, where sir. people wear a sweatshirt and will generally have a picture of something. And then they have on multicolored skinny jeans. Yeah, and more, yep, different, different, different colors. Different colors. Important. Skinny Some jeans or chinos. Yep. Like purple, green, cream, whatever, just yeah. not black. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a time where some people had Nirvana sweatshirts, some people had Paramore sweatshirts, and a lot of the rhetoric you would hear was, you don't even listen to that band. You don't even listen to them. You don't even know who they are. And fair enough. I didn't know who they were. I didn't have any of them, though. I stuck. I stayed away. But a lot of people who did have them didn't know who they were, um, which is part of the reason, one, I never got any of the jumpers because I didn't want to be called out like that. And two, I still have it. Well, I hadn't listened to them to that point. So had you heard any of their singles that went big and do you recall any of those? Or is this like, for you, really like a blind experience? I had heard the occasional single, but it was never like, um, sit down and I let me listen to Paramore and see. Mm -hmm. It was more so I'll be in a car and Paramore will come on on the radio and I would have missed like the song name. Yeah, yeah. It'll be the end of the radio, the red end of the song, and the radio. That was Paramore. This is this. And I'm like, oh, that's Paramore, all right? Mm-hmm. But I never even like really mentally noted down what song. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this was like, it was a very, it was a new experience. But saying that, so the way that socials have worked lately, um, 
you know, I've been informed by Black Twitter. I thank you, Black Twitter, for informing me on everything that you have informed me on in Black History Month, especially. Um, that one of the bands that a lot of um the culture like just appreciates for what they are is Paramore. And a lot of people say, yo, when Haley does what Haley does, and when Paramore do what Paramore do, yeah, it's always like a moment. Black Twitter basically informed me that this is a group worth listening to. So the last what two, three years my mindset has always been like, okay, at some point, I do want to sit down and listen to Paramore. So when you suggested this album, I was happy. I was happy because I don't think I would have actually gone to it by myself at any point. I was procrastinating. Yeah, well, even to that point, before we get into the album, like if you remember in um, when we did our little change of forecast segment earlier on this year, I said that Cat Burns is going to be scheduled for a big year. And I actually found out of Cat Burns during the pandemic when she recorded herself doing a TikTok cover of one of Paramore songs. And um, we'd actually just started the podcast at that time. And I remember vividly, because I commented um, on the tweet that it was with, and in the comments, it was like, underneath the comments, it was like, man, black people love Paramore. Mm. And there was a Nigerian drummer in Nigeria who had drummed, it did an unbelievable drum cover of one of their songs and I tweeted him from the two stub Nigerians at two stub Nigerians account, you know, trying to make a fan, trying to make those cross country connections and shit like mm-hmm. that. Just like, yo, this is so dope. And he was like, oh man, thank you, my Nigerian brother. So I remember that vividly. So that was, would have been around the time we just started the podcast as well that that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, man, like I said, as someone who was a fan of theirs, a big fan of theirs and a big fan of Hayley Williams as a person, not just as an artist or at least the pers- persona of hers that I am aware of because I don't know her personally, although I would like, love to if she's ever, you know, in the Manchester, greater Manchester area um, or the greater Milton Keynes area, you know what I'm saying? I travel. Um, I was excited when this album was announced. I was excited when it dropped. And so now here we are with the Two Star Nigerians review of this is why. Let's kick it off where we always kick it off, right at the beginning, right at the inception, man. Themes, what did you pick out? What stood out to you as you were listening to this mm. album? What message do you think Paramore were trying to get across with this project? Themes, I had a tough time with the themes. I had a tough time with the themes. And that's always what, especially since we started this structure, I always like try and immediately pick up on the themes. Um, I struggled. I struggled until yesterday, literally yesterday evening. Well, I was like, you know, enough is enough because I was struggling. I was really, really struggling to pick up on what the running theme was from song one to the end. And I was getting ready to come in here and say, I don't know if there was a theme. Um, until I read like just um, a little interview they did around the release of this album and them breaking down essentially that this album was pretty much just them telling what they've been through throughout the last few years. And that really added a lot of context to some of the songs, I think. Songs like The News, um, where they're essentially just saying, yeah, there's nothing but bad news (laughs) that's being played right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Songs like Little Man, um, no, Big Man, No Small Integrity. It's like, oh, they're talking about the presidency and elections and all that. And it's like, it just adds a lot of context. I think, so essentially the theme that they were going for was the world and since they last dropped an album, essentially. Um, and I think it's an interesting theme. It's an interesting theme because it a lot has happened. A lot has happened. It feels like they're trying to cover a lot in a very, very concise album. Um, this is what? 38 minutes? 36. 36 minutes. Very, very short. Well, not very short, but it's a short album to try and cover a lot of ground. Um, And it can come off as not necessarily focus. But once you have that added context of, okay, no, this is just the world that we lived in. And then sort of, they're coming in as kind of a narrator for what's gone on in the last few years. And you either pick up on what they're talking about or you can just try and see if you can apply it to any anywhere else in your life. Um, so it was interesting. It was interesting. But that's the main theme I picked out from it. Yeah, man, I'm not too dissimilar. I, I, I summed it up really as life. Paramore as a group, historically, and I think on this album, always do a really good job of um, giving you, the individual, the words 
to articulate what you're feeling and seeing in the world. So like on a song like This Is Why, that hurts simply just being like, this is why I don't need the fucking house. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like you see everything that's going on, struggling in the world and all the problems, and then you go outside and someone just gets on your last nerve. And you're just like, this is why I don't need the house. Like, I, I don't want to deal with this. I don't put up with this. I just stay in my house, stay in my bubble. And they, they've they always done, throughout the career, and again, I think a lot on this album, do a really good job, like you say, of just being able to articulate what's happening in the world and how they feel about it, but then how the audience feels about it in a way that allows you to resonate. So, like, big man, little dignity. That's it. Like not even just looking from it as a, a point to the presidency, but I think you can apply that to people in life in general that you encounter mm. who come off with this big persona, they come off with, you know, this flashy bravado, but then you look deeper and you're like, bro, you have no integrity, you have no dignity, you have no values, you have no morals, you have no social upstanding, you have no bitches, you have no sneakers, you have no like you have no like you got nothing. Pesos. Like do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Elon <laughs> You got all that money but you ain't got no source. <laughs> I see you were one bitch. Yeah, got, I... <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, where's your chain? <laughs> Chain at, nigga. <laughs> Where your chain at? <laughs> but yeah, you see, you see those um, elements, and so yeah, I I agree with you. I think they, I think it's a real so uh, it's social commentary mm. done through the medium of pop slash punk rock, mm. um, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Songwriting, mm. lyricism. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Um, especially with the added context of it being a social commentary album where they're talking on a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're going through it and you're picking up on what they're saying and it it is punchy. It's mm-hmm. punchy. Um, I think they say a lot with little, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. One song that immediately sticks out to me, probably one of my favorite songs off of this album, um, You First. You <laughs> First is great. And the hook, the hook just sticks with me. It's so poignant. He's like, oh, man, let me even get the lyrics up. I should have got the lyrics up before we started. But bear with me, bear with me, because I won't forgive myself if I don't actually mention this by word for word. Yep, fam. Everyone is a bad guy, and there's no way to know who's the worst. Karma's going to come for all of us, and I hope, well, I hope, I just hope, she comes for you first. And that just spoke to the inner hater inside of me. Oh, my goodness. That just, listen, you're speaking poetry to me at that point, because, listen, I'm not saying that I'm better than you. I am saying I'm better than you, but I'm not saying necessarily that I'm better than you, not you. But okay. you. <laughs> you're using a royal you. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the general outside, you know, to the people I'm hating on, I'm not saying I'm a better person than them, but I do think I'm a better person than them, and I think yeah. karma should get you before it gets me for the things I've done poorly. Yeah. You know? Um, man, I like it, man. There's a lot of points throughout this album where I'm just like, oh yeah, I like that. I could that speaks to me a little bit. Um, yeah, it just pointed. They say a lot with little. I, yeah. I, I like that yeah i think that's a i mean that's a rock trope in general like mm. it's not as it's not like you know you ain't getting a 16 in rock because you know what i'm saying like yeah. you're not getting a 16 bar versus so they do do a lot less with the words but they do they have a lot less words but they do a lot sometimes more with them or they have to do more with the less words that they got i really like that i always i mean that song especially really resonated with me because like some in a different way to what you say i'm I'm very much of the opinion that every single one of us on this planet, all seven, close to eight billion of us, are a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Every single one of us. Every single mm-hmm. one of us are a piece of shit. We're just pieces of shit in different veins and different to different levels. Mm. Um, and so I know that karma's going to get me for my level of piece of shitness. My hope is that it's not as bad as your level of piece of shitness and at least gets you first. Mm. And lets me to enjoy the, the spoils of my... 
the small bits of good that I do mm. uh, in this world before it takes me. But I really like that. Another one for me um, where the songwriting really stuck out is on the outro on Thick Skull. Okay. Which I really, really like. Their intro is much more solemn and slowed down than a lot of the rest of the album before. And just the way Haley starts off with, I'm a magnet for broken pieces. I'm attracted to broken people. I pick them up and now my fingers are bleeding and it looks like my fault and it looks like I'm caught red-handed. Like that realization that I'm entering these bad relationships or bad friendships, but it's my fault because I'm so attracted to broken people. Like, I always feel like I need to fix people. But the thing with pe- picking up broken shards of glass is you're going to cut your fucking hand. Yep. And now my hand is bleeding red and I'm caught red handed because I'm the one at fault. I just love that. Mm. And the mm. way she wove that in and then the way she was using her voice on that song to do so as well, I thought it was brilliant. Um, and then, like I say, the simplicity and punchiness of this is why at the beginning, like if you have an opinion, maybe you should shove it or maybe you should scream it um might be best to keep it to yourself like i don't care about your opinion yep and the fact you think you have an opinion on what it is i'm doing this is why i don't leave the house mm, mm, like mm. she basically hopped on and said the fact that the two stuff nigerian think that they can tell me that talk about my, my album, album <laughs> is why you ain't gonna see me again for another six years i understand that Haley. i feel you i feel you i was really interested to see how you thought about the songwriting because Haley, for her career has always been like a very celebrated songwriter mm-hmm. for what she's able to do so i was interested i, inter- I like the fact that you liked it i was interested to see how you fit with that different dynamic being in it being in a different realm and so now mm. we'll take it to your bread and butter mm. Your um, your I don't know your your, like your <laughs> I know you're going. Your Gary, your, your Gary and a gay gay bread. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, Gary and a gay gay bread is a crazy comment. What do you mean? Alone. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I think we don't have to live like this. What's the last time we had Gary? <laughs> we're getting money. We don't have to. to... <laughs> What's the last time we had Gary? Years ago. Years. Yeah, it's been years. a minute, isn't it? Um, since, I, since I could learn to cook for myself, I said, I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> 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 he won't do this to me. <laughs> you come home. Hey, mama, I got my first check. You don't have to live like this no <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can move out the hood. <laughs> we can move out the hood. I'm getting us out the hood, mama. <laughs> So we move over to your neck of the woods. Talk to me about what you thought the production and the composition of this project. Mm. Um, I think each song is really, really good in terms of like the sound. And that's not a surprise because I love live instrumentation and this is a band where the guitars, you're never going to hear bad guitars on this album. That's the one thing that I went into this album knowing that the guitars were going to be amazing begin throughout. Mm. Um, and they just are, they don't let down. Um, I think the way that the songs are arranged on the song on the album, I haven't got a problem with it, everything flows pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, the guitars throughout begin to end, it's just amazing. Like, that is genuinely probably the highest point for me on this album is just how good those guitar sounds begin to end, man. Like, it's it's insane, it's mm-hmm. insane. The beat. Every beat just sounds really, really good, and I'm attributing I'm attributing it to the fact that it's just live instrumentation, and they're good at what they do. Because I've heard rock that doesn't necessarily sound good to my ear, um, so I don't want to like undercut them by saying, "Oh yeah, it's live instruments it's gonna be it's gonna sound good." No, not necessarily. But in this case, the live instrumentation, especially compared to the things that I've been listening to in general recently, there's a massive difference. And it works, man. It sounds good. It sounds mm. good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I feel you. I'm similar. I also, I, I like the fact that to me, anyway, each song has a personality of its own. Mm. Um, it definitely, like, they all are rock songs, but they have, they take on different elements. Like, this is why it doesn't feel like Thick Skull, which doesn't feel like Running Out of Time, which doesn't feel like Se Consa. Like, they each have their own personality, maybe because they're each addressing a different point of, like, one's angst at something in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
we've run out of time literally just being Haley lamenting her poor time management skills mm. so I'm like, man I hit the snooze button and I lost some time I was like we've all been there we've yeah. all been there mm-hmm. we've all been there when you hit that snooze button and then you wake up and it's two hours later man. we've been there mm. we've been there that's the tragic <laughs> one <Ooh. Damn. laughs> yo you know how many times what's happened to me where I'm like all right, late party. If I get out of bed now, I can I can get ready for work and be ready by work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you? Let me hit snooze. I wake mm-hmm. up with I don't know. I'll just get ready in fifteen minutes. That's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> I wake up at nine thirty. It's like Jesus. <laughs> <He's> my... <laughs> you haven't seen I'm awake. God. Is <laughs> <laughs> that to get to the office? Oh man, mad mad mash up on the on the M on the M something today, isn't it? <laughs> oh man, you didn't catch the traffic. Oh, must have been, must have, you just, must have just missed it. You got lucky. <laughs> Man, that's why I'm so lucky. I'm the only one that comes in from my direction. So when oh, I yeah. get in, like the A5, man, oh, A5, oh, A5, oh, always, oh, always, 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 always <laughs> traffic. <laughs> <laughs> then another nigga from Milton Keynes starts, and you're like, what? <laughs> Unacceptable, fam. <family. There's> another... <laughs> if someone else from Milton Keynes joins, I'm slandering them. <laughs> I'm slandering... <laughs> yeah, you know he sells crack, right? Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know that's what he does. Um. Yes, so each song takes on personality of its own, which I really like. But it's really cohesive. I think, like you said, the live instrumentation and the band being just exceptionally good at what they do as a band, which is saying something because, like, this is another... I mean, I don't know how much you know about rock bands in general, but they just be subbing niggas in and out like it's the Pistons. Um, Why did I pick the Pistons? I don't know. There are like there are thirty NBA teams which I could have picked from. There are thirty two NFL teams I could have picked from. <laughs> so you, if you said the Brooklyn Nets, it would have made it would that would have made so much more sense, time. right? <laughs> the business have been, or even or even the Celtics with the amount of bodies that they can just throw at you. <laughs> That's so true. Oh my god, fun the Celtics. So, so. Anyway, but the way rock bands be subbing people in and out a lot, and so this version of Paramore is a new version with returning old members who had left coming back to form this group again. So they do have the the chemistry, they do have the history of chemistry together, but it was from a long time ago. And so for this iteration of the group to still be able to be so cohesive and tight together, I think is a real testament to what they did. Well, did you think the project as a whole was cohesive? And it was like easy enough for you to listen to and go through? It was, it was, it was one of those things where, um, you know, it played. There's not, it's a quick album, it's a shorter album, it feels shorter as well. Like, it's a short album that feels shorter than it actually is. Mm. Um, it felt cohesive in terms of there was never a point where I was like, oh, I this, it feels weird that this is here. Mm. Like, um, I'm trying to think of an example. An easy example that we say all the time, man. Um, Axe the Fool on the beginning of Port of Miami 2. Mm-hmm. That's one of those songs where it's like, it comes on and it's like, ah, ah, I don't know if you should start with this. Especially not, the not, song, not, I don't know. You shouldn't. <laughs> There's no point on this album where I'm like, ooh, I want to put this song here, especially now I've listened to every song on the album. Every song, every song just feels like, okay, yeah, cool. It's here. It's mm-hmm. cool. But at the same time, I wouldn't go out of my way to say, oh, it would place perfectly. There's nowhere else you could have placed this. I'm sure they could have sequenced this differently, and I don't know if it would have made the biggest change. I think the only song that is exactly where it should be is the outro. I think intro and outro. I was going to say, I think intro and yeah. outro should be those two places, and I think everything yeah. else you can interchange. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's, it's a testament, because it means that the album, the songs were created in a manner that meant that, okay, everything is pretty cohesive in the nature that they created, in mm-hmm. the event and wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Songs? Yeah, we can do songs. Let's give me, give me those top three in reverse order. In reverse order, I have at number three, um, Running Out of Time. Mm. Running Out of Time is a cool song, um, I think for a while there, I was trying to find a deeper meaning in it where there didn't need to be a deeper meaning. I was like, wow, running out of time? Did someone die? Someone died. She ran out of time. She was making all these excuses and now the press is gone. Man, that is a real thing. It's like, okay, cool. Um, 
I don't know if it's all that. I think it might have just been poor time management in general. It was poor time management. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like running out of time. Um, it's a cool sounding song. Just to, the, not 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 to cut you off, but just to say that's another one that we need to add to the out of time sweepstakes because mm-hmm. between this and out of time by the weekend and mm-hmm. running out of time by Man. Tyler and Man. I'm forgetting another one. Um, but all these people putting out of time as the head as the song title and the song slapping there's a conversation <laughs> that needs to be had it might be a cheat code man because they know people be we'll be running out of time we'll be running out of time for real <laughs> man um at number two i have the news oh nice the news i love that I, it's, it's just a really good song man um mm-hmm. it's one of those this is why i liked it I wasn't necessarily insane over it, but I thought, all right, this is a cool intro. And then the new starts, and I'm like, ooh, okay, mm-hmm. all right, this is cool. Um, so, yeah, I have the news at number two, especially just the messaging. It's one of the reasons, and I, it's funny, I've had this conversation with my mum recently where I said, yeah, I don't, I won't watch BBC News, I won't watch Sky News, um, especially after 2020 when they were trying to take down um, the Winston Churchill statue. And just the way that that was reported on Sky News and BBC News compared to what I was seeing from handheld cameras on Twitter, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, you guys really like to twist things up. Um, but even the messaging of just... Mm. Oh, twisting their fingers, fingers like, why you? Come on, man. <laughs> They're doing their dance for real, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, nah, um, I just like the message of the news anyway, like just uh, how everything is just so depressing. You turn on TV and it's always bad news. Um, yeah, man, I I could relate. I felt that, man. Um, and then the final one, You First, it is a fantastic song. Fantastic song, man. That's one of those songs where if there's any song that I take from this album that gets regularly played, it'll be You First, man. You First is a really, really good song. Really I, like, I like this. We got three completely different songs, which is dope. So at number three, I've got, and if we had done this last week when we had planned to, but obviously we ran out of time. Mm. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the best. That's the thing. Um, this probably would have been number one, but that's this is why. So I got this is why three. I've loved it since the moment it came out. Obviously, like I said, being the lead single, I love the messaging. And again, as someone who does not leave the house and is adamant about my not leaving the house, it's given me an anthem of to why people are like, oh, why don't you ever leave the house? And I can just play them this song. Like, hey, listen to this, and it'll tell you why I don't leave the house. And number two, I've got Big Man Little Dignity. It's such a smooth little vibe. Mm. It's just playing, and she'll just be singing in your background. My head will just be rocking. Hey, mm. big man. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I like it. And then the messaging of it too, I really enjoy it. And then number one, for me, Thick Scott. I absolutely mm. love that song. Um, mm. The messaging, the imagery, the way she uses her vocal, how it's slowed down. Like you compare how upbeat and up tempo the news is, and then compare how slowed down the outro two songs are. I think it's amazing. Um, genuinely, a really, really good, brilliant way to close out what I was a really enjoyable project. Like, mm. Even as someone who was a fan of theirs or was excited for this, it was more enjoyable than I anticipated it being. Um, mm. And Thick Skull, really. Every time I get to the end of it, it's like, can you give me like 10 more of these? You know what I mean? Like, you've given me 10 great songs. Can you give me 10 more of these? Mm. Um, so yeah, I got This Is Why at 3. I got Big Man Little Dignity at 2. And then I got Thick Skull at 1. Understandable. Understandable. Mm. Fair. In terms of skills? If, if you want to take it there, we can take it there. Uh, Yeah, let's take it to the skills, man. So, the two stubborn Nigerian album rankings go as such. Damn, I thought I was going to be able to pull it up by the time I finish that sentence. All right. The two stubborn Nigerian album rankings go as such. I hate that I ever listened to this. Won't be listened to again. Whole lot of myth. Might stay in rotation for about a week. 
pretty damn good, serious project. And then either me and or Paul can give it our 50% stamp of approval. In the case that we both give it our 50% stamp of approval, the album will become Too Stubborn Nigerian Approved. Paul, where are you going with this one? Do we send out awards to people who get like Two Star Manager and approved? Like, what what did they actually gain? From? They're going to be put on our quarterly um, newsletter that will be posted to socials. That so, you, so, you, so you've just committed to creating a newsletter. That's what you're I saying. commit. This was going to be in our meeting. This is a spoiler for our next meeting. <laughs> okay, amazing. <laughs> Very serious project. I really, I really enjoyed this project. Um, we've had a lot longer to live with it from the time that I first wrote, said we were going to do it. And so I've actually been able to see whether it stayed in rotation, which it mm-hmm. did. I was able to see well, how my enjoyment levels were after its first week in rotation. And they're still really high. And I think, so that's a personal level on the subjective and on the objective when I just think about the music and everything that we've just spoken about, I think the music is of really high standard and really good quality throughout. So yeah, for me, it's a very serious project. It does fall short of getting my stamp mm. just because, um, again, as someone who is a fan of Paramore, I don't think as of yet, we'll see how this, the songs age. Paramore have some singles which are all timers on mm. previous projects and I don't think they have an all-timer on here. I think if they mm. had at least one all-timer that I can put up there with um, Brick, Bubble and Brick, Ignorance, Decode, you don't know these, that's absolutely fine. Brick, Bubble and Brick, Ignorance, Decode, um, all the hard times, all the ain't it fun, all those all-timers that they have, it would definitely probably get my stamp, but without that very serious project. Mm. Mm. Um... It's a funny one. I feel like I'm about to give it two ratings here. I'm about to give it two different ratings. Um, I think overall, the project is pretty damn good. It's a pretty damn good project. That being said... You're not listening to it again. Not that I'm not listening to it again. That right. being said, I hate that I ever listened to this. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is when i um, the excitement that I mentioned earlier with me being excited when you said, oh, okay, let's do a Paramore album. Um, part of the realisation I had, because obviously you just said the album, the name of the album, so I was going into it with no context. Part of what I realised very quickly was that this is a new album. This is their latest release, in fact, um, which was a shock to me. But it's like, okay, cool. In listening to it, I agree with you. There was no song on here that was like, although I liked a lot of the songs, there was no song where I was like, oh, this, this is a paramour that everyone's excited about. Mm-mm. This is the reason why mm-hmm. they say this is an all-time, this is an all-time group mm-hmm. that made all-time music. Um, so I hate that I ever listened to it because I would have loved for the first paramour experience I have to be an album with one of those on it. Mm-hmm. In, a similar, in a similar way to how the first Fleetwood Mac album I listened to I had the chain on it. Mm-hmm. I had the chain is one mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. I would have loved for a Paramore album where I had one of them. Mm-hmm. Where I could be like, oh, I I see. I see what's going on now. I feel like that would have been a better first experience. That being said, this wasn't a bad album. Mm-hmm. I just hate that this is my introduction to the band, if that makes sense. No, that's a total sense. I think that's really good analysis. And like I said, like it's one of them away from being stamped for me. And Ooh. that's to tell you, like, it just doesn't have one of those on here. Now, that's not, maybe that makes the album as a whole better. Because, I mean, like, we talk off camera all the time where you say, like, um, Free Mind by Thames stands out like a sore thumb on that project to you because the rest of the album doesn't live up to what that song sets out to be. So maybe if it had one of those all timers on there, the rest of the album would fall short. Um, I don't know. We don't know. But yeah, completely, completely makes sense. I completely agree. Like, I think it's missing one of them. Not to take away from the album, because the album quality is Ooh. good and what we've got is good. But the Paramount I know always stopped one of them. And I don't Ooh. know that any of these are growing into one of them. And as again, you having not listened, I can tell you that none of these tracks are anywhere the level of when they are them. 
You know right. what I'm saying? So, so you ain't missing out there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That being said, it's a good album. It's a really good album. I'm really happy with this project, man. I really enjoyed it. 